welcome. Today we have Seek One and Fam Holdings on, and we're going to talk about their project that they're going to be launching. And it's a little different than some of the projects we, we normally have on here. This is more of a traditional art moving into the digital art um, and NFT space. So um, welcome. How's it going, Seek? Good, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, fam as well. I know you guys were, were busy today, but I'm glad that we were able to to bring you on. So um, I guess first, like, let's start with um, how you guys met. How did you meet in, in general? Was it outside of NFTs? Was it inside of NFTs? Yeah, uh, we actually met through a, a mutual friend um, just over lunch. Um, and I had been kind of just discussing how I was interested in launching an NFT <clears throat> as a fine artist, uh, street artist. And, um, you know, I had never met Fan before and we started talking and he was, you know, very interested in the space. He knew a lot of people who were also, you know, heavily involved. So um, we kind of decided to take it a little bit further and see what we could do. And, uh, you know, we've taken it much further from that point. And, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're almost ready to launch our first NFT. So we're really excited. Yeah, and it was so funny because so Rob's best friend in the world, it's Kid Tom, I've been friends with for about six years now. We were supposed to just grab drinks for business purposes. Then he says, hey, can my best friend Rob come down to have drinks with us? And next thing you know, a couple of drinks later at Park and Rittenhouse, we're like, I think we could launch an NFT together, Rob. Like, can you trust me on this? We had another follow-up lunch and we said, you know what, let's do this together. So we added a lot to the team. We have a developer from Google and Twitter. Uh, we have another guy that worked at Publicist Health Media, one of the largest media agencies in the world, doing SEO and the Discord. So we have a very professional team. My background is in financial services and private equity and, and big banks. So we, we, we're working with a lot of people that have experience in different industries. Yeah, yeah that's cool to see that, like, you know, it's not just one person. It's a group effort and it seems like you're pretty passionate from basically one meeting you do this is something that you're willing to to hop into and you found you know someone who's a great artist obviously is is pretty known in the art world and um yeah. i i kind of wanted to ask real quick on that um how did you get into specifically like graffiti street art um were yeah. you originally doing like canvas work and then one day you just you thought now's yeah. the time to, to just spray some walls uh no so I actually i i started i grew up like skateboarding doing graffiti um so that was kind of like and i was very into photography as well that's kind of like my baseline for um you know everything that's gotten me to this point um and then i obviously, you know, had gotten in trouble for graffiti, it's illegal, you know, and uh, it kind of forced me to transition to canvas um, and start experimenting with different mediums like that. And then, you know, one thing led to another, I started, um, you know, I made Instagram, I started making more and more pieces, people started buying them, and celebrities started noticing me and um, it kind of just <clears throat> snowballed, um, where I was at the point where I, you know, I quit my job and basically took this full time. And, uh, it's, you know, I haven't looked back since it's been like, uh, I don't know, almost five years at this point. Um, yeah. 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 And so I know it's, it's the type of thing where it's hard hopping into the NFT side of things. Um, yeah. you know, with, with graffiti, so it's a little different, but were you selling pieces? um with graffiti like physicals after i'm not sure how that side of it works like um afterwards do you remake the graffiti on a canvas and then sell that uh so basically everything i make now is uh in my studio yeah. so you know i have like a concept in mind say it's like a, a marilyn monroe painting or something um everything i make is on wood panel um it's uh it's mixed media by nature. So it's old newspapers, uh, acrylics, graffiti, oil, pastels, we pasted images, um, things like that. Um, and you know, it's a collective of different things that all come together and basically, um, define my style at the moment. Okay. Yeah. And so, so fam, how did you turn and say, this is something that I think should be in the NFT world, why it would be maybe 
you don't really see uh, the style all too often and the, the generative aspect of it. So um, what to you in this specific scenario, like you thought this art was something that was going to be something that people would want in the NFT world? Yeah, I mean, it's really just a transformation from the physical world to the digital world. So, you know, Seek One, he's a very humble guy, but I will brag for him. His paintings go for five to $20,000 a pop. And so not everyone can afford that, obviously. So we want to make fine art accessible to the masses. And that's why we had the inception of Chosen Ones by Seek One. And so, you know, we saw oh, there's all these PFPs, there's all these cartoons, and that's great and all. They have great communities, great followings, a lot of alpha in terms of the value that they provide. But at the end of the day, there's nothing in the fine art world except for the exception of maybe Damien Hirst and a handful of other uh, famous artists. So knowing that there's only a handful of famous artists that do this type of work, I thought this is a differentiating product compared to what's out there in the marketplace. So, you know, there's very few artists on, on the same level as Seek One that are doing this in the digital world and making it widespread. Some of them are trying to dabble with the one of ones on OpenSea and not seeing much success, to be quite frank. So that's what we're trying to do on the back end as well is give artists like Seek One a platform to make you know, revenue in another way, in a digital way through NFTs, because they don't have the business acumen or the technology acumen to launch the smart contract on the blockchain for the NFT. They don't have someone to run the discord, which is really, it's crazy to me seeing it all transpire is that we think, okay, Seek One's got close to 20,000 followers on Instagram. We thought, oh, we'll have 2000 of them start the discord. It's not like that. So yeah. kind of showing the intricacies of the business is where we thought it was a differentiator for, again, artists down the line, which is what something that Chosen One's holders will be able to get. They'll be able to get whitelist to legitimate artists that we work with personally, we're, we're in real life friends with them. So they're not getting into these you know, nonsense projects that may or may not be a rug pull or can't execute on the roadmaps, which we're seeing a lot more of people you know, copy and paste the roadmap and this utility and really don't have anything to show for it. So that's what we're trying to do is help artists really get into the business of NFTs because it's obviously, you know, something that's going to grow only from here. It's like Bitcoin in 2012 is what I could equate to NFTs today in 2022. Yeah. And so we already have a question in chat from Dylan. He He's wondering where he could buy some Seek One Crocs. Is that... uh? Do you have a, a line of Crocs? Um, no, I, I do not. But um, it's kind of an underlying uh, inside joke where I wear Crocs to work every day. Um, so in my studio, I, I take my shoes off and I wear Crocs the entire time. Um, and they're covered in paint. They look awesome. And, you know, maybe one day there's a collaboration that could be had. But, um, you know, only, only special people have access to them. So maybe one yeah. day we'll auction them off. Collector's yeah. items. Lou, there's about to be a hundred ETH floor on these Crocs. People are going crazy <laughs> about them in the Discord. So we do a lot of live streams so people can see yeah. Seek One in the studio making art, as yeah. well as an AMA and Q&A section at the end for people that want to ask whether it's something silly or something legitimate. You know, what's the mint price? What's your supply? You know, what do you plan to do for the utility? So it, it's been a fun experience for us to really connect with the community. And that's what personally I love and I underestimated how much I love is connecting with people on a personal level. So, you know, people that are in the discord, they know that myself and, and SMW88 are oh, and one of our other business partners are in there virtually 24 seven interacting with every person. And what's crazy to me is when people say, Oh my God, you're the owner of the NFT and you're interacting with us. And it's like, how come other owners aren't interacting with their community on a way that's personal? So like, I know that Ant 18, he has three Frenchies. Um, you know, I know, I know uh, Malty is from Denmark. You know, I know a, at least one tidbit about every single active member in our community. Yeah. So I think that building relationships on a personal level is what has made us had so much success in a short period of time. Because we just launched our Discord and our social media. Seek One did not have a Twitter account as of December 2021. 
Um, you know, now we have over 10,000 people in our Discord and we have, you know, over 3,000 followers on Twitter and we haven't paid a single dollar in advertising and marketing because we want to grow an organic community that truly believes in Seek One's art as well as our passion for the community to build out something that brings true utility in the real life world as well as the, the metaverse. Yeah, and yeah, we've, uh, I guess the closest we've had to a guest um, like this was with the Cryptoon goons. I don't know if you've heard of them before, but um, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were kind of, they kind of started similar where it was the artist and he was trying to do everything himself. Yeah. And then once he realized, you know, this, I'm not a coder, like I'm, I'm yeah. looking on, you know, YouTube videos or Fiverr has like stuff on, on contracts and stuff. Um, but it's like really cool to then connect with other people that have that background and are able to, to help with that side of things. So with this, with this discord. Well, now, Luke, can we yep. hold on for a second? I love that you brought up Cryptoon goons because we, we want to give them a shout out, shout out to Hodge. Hodge, Hodge is, Hodge is mm -hmm. one of the product developers of Cryptoon goons, possibly a co-founder you could say. And he's been in our discord since we had under 50 people yep. when nobody knew about chosen ones. He believed in us because he saw Seek One's art. So I just wanted to give a special set shout out to Hodge and Cryptoon Goons. We appreciate the support. Yeah, Hodge is a friend of the show. We've had him. He's been in our our chat often, and yeah, you know, we've talked to them. Um, the we like the Goons there. Um, we've had a couple different episodes with some people. I knew um, Jesse, who's the coder for them, that the head and engineer over there. Um, we've had him on a couple weeks ago, so they're they're uh near and dear to us over at lucky trader so um it's cool to see that like you guys are connected are you guys doing yeah. any any events like um i know they're doing the south by southwest coming up um are you doing any sort of events like that <laughs> not yet we're, we're thinking about you know we're going to go down and you know attend most of those events hopefully but um you know until we you know pass our mint date we don't have anything on the books yet but we do have you know, an art show in mind that we want to do with, you know, my actual paintings, um, incorporating the NFTs and, you know, exclusively for the holders of the NFT. So that's something that we're really looking forward to. And, and post mint, we will be having a launch party in Philadelphia because yeah. we are a Philly based artist as well as a team. So we want to show love to the city of brotherly love and host a party where all of our pro athletes, our celebrities, our influencers that have believed in our project prior to it, taking off can come and congregate all of our holders could come um and that's part of the utilities these exclusive events um we will be down at art basil this year that was actually kind of our launching pad for chosen ones by seek one is seek one and i went down to art basil because he had a lot of paintings for sale which all sold out and we were then able to kind of leverage it let people know this is something that we're doing um in the coming months so again it's kind of been a a whirlwind of experience showing that like again in two, uh, two months uh we've grown so much and and people that didn't know about seek one in the art world even though he's very reputable in the art world you know they now know about seek one so it's great to see the people in our community wanting to purchase in real life art from seek one which they have and kind of bridging the gap again between the physical and the digital world yeah Got a bunch of them here in the chat right now. Got some chosen fam, as they say. Don from the Discord is here. They want to tell you that they think you're amazing. They love the growth. They love the family aspect of it. And oh, oh. Uh, Crypto Junkie 420 is here as well. What's good, so, CJ? So it's cool to see them that come out and you know want to hear a little more about the story. So let yeah. let's get a little into the NFT side of it. So. You know, chosen ones. That's what you went with for the name. And um, why? Why did you go with that as a name? Is there a specific um, reason behind that? Yeah. yeah. So, so really, what the story was is Seek One. He's been going by that since he went full time as an artist, and we just thought that as a as a catchy name we wanted to let everyone know you're chosen so that's why we talk about the chosen fam no one can choose their family but when you're part of an nft community you can choose to be a part of it so it was kind of a, a play on letting you know that 
you can be a part of something that you want to do voluntarily, as opposed to your blood family. This is our chosen family. We're the chosen ones. We're making sure that everyone, a part of the community feels special. That's really what this has been built on, is letting every person know when they say GM, we say GM back. We mean good morning. <laughs> we, we appreciate all the love. And it's not just, you know, the, the classic, you know, LFG, GM, you know, grinding for it. That's why we're all vibes, no grind. Uh, we don't require you to hit a certain level. Um, we don't require virtually anything. It's more just if you believe in the project, you're active in the community, you're going to be a chosen one because we can feel you out for what you are there for. Yeah, it's cool. I, I, I brought some of the images up if you're listening to the audio. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, Are all of them going to have a little animated feature to it? Or is it only some of them are going to be that way? No. So actually, um, the way we're designing the whole thing um, is only 30% are going to have animations. And that's going to be a mixture of, um, as you can see here, if you have the visual uh, paint splatters and then... Um, these ones don't show up, but in the bottom right corner, there's actually an animation of my um, signature, which um, will be available in different colors. Um, and then the remaining 70% are going to be static images. So, cool. yeah, so it's a little, you know, a little rarer, probably yeah. ones mm -hmm. that are animated, people will, will put a little higher value to. But at the same time, like the signature, I think, is, is a really cool part to it as yep. well, that that sort of gives them the connection to you as owning the item you know if if you were to say get a print or something of it you do have that signature on there so um is these are going to be generative um and you just created specific traits are the traits colors are they the strokes how does that part work no, so, so the traits are going to be based on um you know as i just mentioned animations um, but then also um, some of them have different um, like posters and like so something that I use in my actual paintings are old magazines and posters and newspapers and stuff. So we have uh, different selected cities from around the world where we're using um, old street posters, which are mixed into the background. So those are going to be individual traits. Um, we're going to be using um different images as you can see in some of these like i think one you had up had like the palm trees there's like a beverly hills one that's on the website um so just different like cool images like that it's not going to be pop art like a lot of my stuff is it's going to be something totally different uh more abstract um and that's kind of going to define you know the difference between a lot of these yeah it's cool yeah i can see in, in the background of some of these that sort of magazine clipping style right. to it which is really cool but like you right. said if they're going to be these signs street signs different areas of the world country however um you could definitely see like people might have a connection to different places and yes. want specific ones so like that would sure. be a cool aspect of it For too sure. and it's also influenced by a lot of my art just in general is influenced by travel so a lot of these places that are referenced as you know like newspapers from rome or from you know london or something like that like these are places that i've been and have actually influenced my tangible art and you know i've, I've taken that into um you know the digital space with this nft launch and, and one of the things that's unique about what we're doing as well is um seek one was inspired by the nft that he, he made to make a physical version of the nft already pre-mint so yeah. you know the palm trees one he did a phenomenal palm trees uh, artwork it's yeah. got the texture on it it's it's just beautiful and and it was inspired by the nft as opposed to the other way around where you would think that a real life artist it would be inspired by his paintings it's it kind of went the other way around which was great and that's a part of the utility as well lou that you kind of mentioned is we're going to be able to provide prints of the actual nft that you own and then if you want to take it a step further you can then get it hand embellished by seek one himself so he'll have his signature on it. He'll put texture on it. So it, it really pops the way his paintings do, um, along with in real life giveaways of prints, hand embellished prints and paintings from Seek One, as I mentioned earlier, valued pretty high. Um, so we're going to be providing uh, people that weren't art collectors before. Uh, they will become art collectors because they might get it for free through our giveaways on a, you know, weekly to monthly basis. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that separates us from other people. 
um, where we're able to provide something that's really unique in the space in terms of real life art. That's why we, we also say, you know, real art over everything, because at the end of the day, you know, some, some of these projects, again, for better or worse, is just a cartoon, but we're able to provide something that's differentiated that virtually no one else besides Damien Hurst and a handful of people have done. And, right. and more so on a community level, those people are kind of living off their brand, which is great because they're international art icons. But we want to people to connect with Seek One. So when Seek One's in the Discord, he's connecting with people. You know, they say, oh, you're you're in Vail. And he said, oh, wh what mountain did you go to? And it's just showing everyone that we genuinely want to connect with them because we feel that building a strong community is really the, the focal point of an NFT. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, giving back to people, they – they have a sense of, you know, they spent money on something, but they mm -hmm. also have the care coming back towards them. So yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then for, for the mint, is there anything set in stone as far as time? Um, it's going to be, I believe, in the next few weeks, right? Yeah. So uh, we wanted to do it now during this live stream because we appreciate you hosting us. Um, the mint date will be for whitelist presale Thursday, February 24th. And the public sale will be Friday, February 25th. So we hope you all are excited for next week. This is when all of it launches, all of the hard work and dedication that everyone from our team to the community has done will come into fruition next at the end of next week. So we're so excited for this launch. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to kind of see it all evolve since we had, again, zero Discord members, zero followers on Twitter. Um, you know, it's just it's just great. Cool. Yeah. So like get on pre-sale. Um, what's the requirement for that? It's to already be in the discord or is it owning items? So it's to be whitelisted within the discord. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's all vibes, no grind. So you're not, we're not making you go to level 15 or 20 or 25, like some of these other discords have you do. Um, which is crazy because a lot of times, you know, you're a regular human being, you have a job, you go to college, you have time with your friends and family and loved ones. So how do you expect someone who's not a part of the actual business to dedicate five hours a day for the next two weeks to get to level 20? And I've done it before for an NFT, and I thought this is the worst experience of my life. So I want to make sure people that are buying our NFT don't have to do it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a, lot, a combination of uh, inviting your friends, hanging out, just being active, not a, a quantitative requirement. And that's what people love too, is like, you know, it gets genuine engagement from the community without forcing their hand. So you can be as engaged or not as engaged as you want, but we notice when you're just in there asking, you know, how's your day? What'd you have for lunch? Did you go golfing this weekend? Whatever. Yeah. And so there, the, the total collection is going to be 7,777. Mm -hmm. Um, what is, do you already have numbers of how many are going to be presale only versus expected for public? Yeah. So we expect the majority of them to be presale. It won't be a hundred percent presale, but it'll be over 50%. Um, and then afterwards the public sale, that's when it's obviously going to, you know, we have it projected to sell out in under an hour, just based off of the people that we have in there. We have a lot of pro athletes, celebrities, influencers, along with a lot of blue chip NFT holders. So we have a few hundred Board Ape Yacht Club and Mutant Ape Yacht Club holders, Azukis, um, Doodles, uh, you know, a lot of creeps, Kaiju Kings, hundreds of them, as well as Jungle Freaks. You know, these are all friends of ours that we truly appreciate them supporting, again, an NFT project that isn't built off of just hype. You know, a lot of times people pay for these NFT promoters and marketing, and we don't believe in that because, we, again, we want people that truly believe in Seek One's art along with our passion for the community and and it's and it's been great you know we've a lot in the past two days alone we've grown two thousand members just off the fact that people are excited because they know the mint date is coming we held up on our end of the deal we told you february 2022 and that's when it's dropping end of next week pre-sale february 24th and the public sale february 25th so we're so excited right now yeah yeah, and then um, I saw one one mention you had on there was merch. Can you talk a little about what type of merch uh, you guys are planning as part of the project? <clears throat> yeah, so basically that's going to be something that I've been, um, I don't know, wanting to do for a while. 
Um, I actually, I just reposted an article that I had with Forbes from a year ago talking about kind of like my style and my art and how like my clothing style relates to my art. And this is kind of with this NFT launch is the perfect chance for me to kind of blend those together and like really show an audience of, um, you know, thousands of people what, you know, I've been putting together for years. And it, it's basically going to be uh, streetwear driven, obviously, and but it's going to be the highest quality stuff, um, fam. Like you, know, I know you're a fan of Kith, uh, Fear of God, like Saint Laurent, like high end brands is like you know what we like to wear, and we want you know all of our fans and followers and collectors to wear the same stuff. So we're going to collect and create a lot of different high end uh, pieces with the best fabrics, and you know they're, they're all going to be hand embellished by me. So each piece of clothing that you will purchase or wear is actually going to be, you know, similar to a painting of mine that you would have in real life where it's a unique one of one piece. Cool. Yeah. And, um, CJ has a question. He's asking how many mints for whitelist versus OG for my OG <laughs> status fan. That's a fan question. <laughs> CJ, I got you, bro. You've been showing <laughs> so much love on Twitter. I really do appreciate <clears throat> it. The team appreciates it. We see it, we recognize it. So you will be a double OG uh if i don't do it tonight i'll do it tomorrow brother so is it going to be just one mint for the pre-sale um and that's at 0.1 eth correct correct so so the the real one white list which is the blue um that will be one mint per uh pre-sale and then the real one ogs which are people that joined us before we had a thousand discord members they will be able to mint two and then the double ogs which are people that have gone above and beyond to kind of promote the project, whether it be inviting a lot of people, double digit people, whether it be constantly tweeting at us, whether it be adding value in the discord by showing people around to the different channels within the server and, you know, just being helpful to the team. Those people are double OGs and they will be able to mint three. So, you know, we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to mint um, and not have to deal with the gas wars. Um, so, you know, that's our priority for us is take care of the people that believe in us before we become the next blue chip NFT. Yeah. And I wanted to show some, some of this art from your site. And so there's a lot of stuff in yeah. here that's obviously, uh, music based is what I'd say a lot of like pop culture as well. Yeah, um, definitely. do you think when people are, you know, minting this are should they be expecting, um, uh, more more stuff like this or are you allowed to create something like this i'm not sure what the public domain is on these things yeah so in in the realm of fine art and when i'm creating these as individual pieces for collectors um I, I, there's it's fair game um but if you actually go to my website and you go to the next tab down it's abstracts and this is something that i've been very interested in and have been experimenting with over the last year or so and this is kind of the uh, inspiration for this entire collection of 7,777 NFTs. Um, and as you can see, like based on the NFT website and compared to these, they're all very similar. And it's kind of like the way we built the NFT is having thousands of images of paintings like this and deconstructing different colors and breaking them down into files and then rebuilding them through AI um, into new, um, you know, different uh nft digital files some static some animated um so everything is super custom everything's basically from my hand because we're drawing you know um images and colors and stuff from these actual paintings and lou uh if you look at the one uh second from the top left with the palm trees yeah. that's the one that seek one made into a physical painting for a collector so again taking the reverse way the digital world to the physical <clears throat> Yeah, so that that's the part that's like really cool about it. Um, I'm someone who I've I've tried now that I've gotten more into NFTs. I've tried to find these ones that you're able to get some sort of physical part to it. Um, above my head here is a piece of art from someone from uh, one of my Discord communities, and you know I thought, oh, I should print it out, and you know I could just hang it up on my wall. Um, I have I'm a big fan of getting stuff that's merch related to things i have one of those creature sweaters um i've looked into a lot of these different projects that have some physical aspect to it like i know the goons had had something with uh skateboards i think you had something like that 
on your site as well. Are, are you guys going yeah. to be doing some skateboards? Uh, anything's possible. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do skateboards. Um, that's, you know, I grew up skateboarding, so it's kind of like a tribute to my past and, you know, to be able to do my art on a skateboard is really like a special thing for me. So it, it's definitely not out of the question for something that we might drop in the future. And that's honestly, Lou, uh, one of our giveaways when we were starting out the Discord yep. was to get people excited was the skateboard giveaways. So Seek One painted these skateboards. They're just like kind of like these abstracts that you have up on the screen here. Yep. And, you know, we gave it to at AZ, AZDPG as well as Flax and Jackson. So, again, it's like I remember all of the people in our community <laughs> that are active because I truly appreciate them believing in us and supporting us before we had any traction in the NFT space. Yeah. Um, and I feel like people get away from the fact that you have these loyal community members and they take them for granted. And I just wanna say to our community, we will never take you for granted. And we appreciate each and one of, each and every one of you guys for supporting us since virtually day one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy because there's a lot of these, these discords popping up now that have, you know, 100,000 plus people in it. And like you said, there's, trying to get on the whitelist and, and flip it fast but you guys seem to be um you know more cultivating a community around it of people that are interested in the art itself in the pieces and it's kind of like a membership in a way to be able to follow your journey along the way and as you maybe you decide to start doing a different style to your art and uh you can have the people that are already invested um they're the ones that get sort of first dibs at seeing what is the next step sort of in your process. And and Lou, that was kind of the the whole emphasis that Seek One and I had when building this community is like picture us as handpicking a social club, a country club where we can choose people that truly genuinely care about us. They're not trying to flip from point one ETH to point three, which you can do where it's a free market. We want people to make money off of our NFT, obviously. But at the end of the day, it's it's at least be there from the beginning for the right reasons. Um, and so you're right. There's plenty of discords with 100,000 members in it. Um, you know, to be fair, probably 50 to 80% of them are probably bots that they bought, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and so again, everyone is active within our discord. You, when you see how many people are in it versus how many people are online, we have over 30% that are online every time. Um, which is a great percentage within the Discord space that one of our community members brought up to us, who's a, a whale within the blue chip NFT space. He's, he said, oh, my God, I can't believe you have 35 percent active right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, it's a testament to what we have built organically. And that's why all of these, you know, athletes, celebrities, influencers are joining and the chosen ones as part of the chosen fam without getting paid a single dollar where normally they'd say, hey, can you give me five thousand dollars to tweet this? It's, it's all because they believe in Seek One's art and they believe in the passion of our community. So that's the genesis of what we built. Yeah. And then as a little more of a pivot, but earlier today when, when we were chatting back and forth and setting this up, you guys said that you were at the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, tell us a little about how this came about and what you're doing with, with them. Yeah, so basically a, a good friend of mine, uh, Peter Tuckman, um, he, you know, if you ever look up Wall, uh, New York Stock Exchange, he's one of the most photographed people on the floor. He's been there for years, um, collector of my art, um, has actually, uh, as you can see here, um, I have three paintings in the permanent collection at the New York Stock Exchange, um, which have been acquired and, you know, is such like a humbling experience. And mm -hmm. um Coincidentally, uh, the New York Stock Exchange is, you know, very interested in the crypto world and uh, NFTs as well. And Peter invited, you know, the chosen fam to come by the New York Stock Exchange and kind of like, you know, see the space, talk about NFTs and, you know, see like where the world of, you know, legitimate currency is going and, you know, how art is kind of blending in with all that. And, you know, fam can definitely talk more on this topic. So we had a great day today. Yeah, so so this picture that you see here on the screen, that's taken on the sixth floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Um, that is a financial hub of the international finance community. So all the big IPOs that you see, uh, you know, on Wall Street, they take place on the boardroom in the sixth floor. That hallway is what leads to the boardroom. And so 
Seek One is one of five artists that are displayed in that hallway. Um, people, you know, billionaires, future billionaires walk through that hallway. They see Seek One's artwork and they absolutely go nuts about it. And when, you know, we walk to the boardroom where all of these events take place, they have uh, on the ceiling, Tiffany Glass from 1906. Um, they have a, a Russian Fabergé egg that's from 1906 because the czar, the czar from Russia didn't want to pay the billion dollars they owed the New York Stock Exchange. So in turn, they gave them a billion dollar Fabergé egg, which is now with inflation is probably worth at least $50 billion. So Sequan and I may or may not have been, you know, petting this Fabergé egg. You know, they, let, they let us do it, you know, for some reason or another. But, you know, it was a great experience, you know, and, yeah. and it goes to show someone that's on Wall Street. Um, is a normal person. And that's what I want to emphasize with our community is yeah. just because someone is on Wall Street and photographed all the time, just because someone's an NFL or NHL athlete, just because someone has a multi-platinum uh, rap song, you know, all these people are part of the community and they're all normal human beings. You know, that's what we want to work with is humble uh, people that really connect with other humans and don't think that just because you have a blue check mark next to your name, you're better than someone. So, you know, that's kind of what we took out of this whole experience was no matter how high you get, you know, you might see us ringing the opening bell one day, who knows, but, you know, we'll always be back to our roots because we really do care about the people that believed in us from day one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a, a pretty cool experience. I've never actually been to uh, the New York Stock Exchange itself, but I've been on the street and obviously, um, know the history behind it. It seems like it's somewhat of a hectic place. Is it a little quieter now with after after COVID? Yeah. It seems like it's not too busy in this picture at least. Yeah, I've been uh you know I've been friends with uh Peter for years and um <clears throat> honestly ever since computers have become extremely optimized with algorithms and things like that, um the floor has been quiet and you know it, you know the opening bell is hectic. You know, the end of the day is a little bit hectic. Uh, but between, you know, those two times, uh, it's all algorithms running it. You feel like you're in a library almost. It's it's kind of really crazy yeah. to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're they're changing. And obviously, like the digital world with the like, crypto and stuff like that is is changing as well. So yeah, it was it was cool to hear that you guys were there. Um, uh, earlier today, even I think you had just gotten back right before. Hopping yeah, out we, we just got off the Amtrak about a, an hour or so ago. Yeah, and, we're back. Uh, we're straight back to our houses to to jump on with you, Lou. And again, thanks again yeah. for having us. We're really enjoying this experience. You know, we love the Lucky Trader Lounge uh, community that that's you know providing a great audience for us to really spread the message of what Chosen Ones is about. Yeah, um, was there anything? Uh, anything else big that I haven't brought up yet that you guys wanted to mention? Yeah. So uh, one of the, the big things that we have is we are launching a Chosen Ones beer uh, with an award-winning brewery that's featured in Forbes. Um, so we can't release the name yet. Uh, you know, the owner of the brewery said, fam, let's hold off on making it official, mm -hmm. but there's going to be press to it. Um, so it's going to be the Chosen Ones beer. It's going to have four different NFTs on the can. So it's going to be a four pack of high quality craft beer, and you're going to have four different NFTs on the can, along with the Chosen Ones logo, as well as all of our social media handles from Seek, at Seek One Art on Instagram, and then at Seek One NFT on Instagram and Twitter for the NFT side of, of Seek One's business. So, you know, this is huge for us. I don't think, Lou, you could tell me if I'm wrong. Has a single NFT project launched a beer pre-mint? Because I don't think they have. Uh um, I don't know. They're probably not. There, There's this one thing. I'm in Colorado. Um, I don't know if you heard the thing they did, but they have, uh, this was like a one of one though. And it was uh, like a beer for life thing with the Denver Beer Co., um, that's probably the closest thing I've seen. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. That, it's kind of cool to like, you hear it with some other products, but um, I don't think I've heard it specifically with beer, but that seems like a pretty logical one to connect with. Uh, yeah, and, and again, this is all pre-mint. So we haven't minted a single NFT. We have collaborations with beer companies. Uh, Rob, do you want to drop the other thing for the chosen fam? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm dropping a rose as well, um, okay. which is uh coming out in April, so 
it's a big year for alcohol, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, which that's something I'm doing totally separate from the NFT, but um, you know, it's cool. Like we're really focusing on and something that I focus on in my business uh, just naturally is um, really like strategic partnerships. So, you know, working with, you know, making a beer, designing a, a label for a, you know, a vineyard with their rosé. Um, also like working with hotel groups, uh, you know, all different things, not just working with galleries or just selling NFT straight up. Like we want to, you know, and build into like the utility and like something that I do with my actual art is working with, you know, any type of business that, you know, can attain art. Yeah. We, we want it all to, to kind of be mainstream. Um, you know, a lot of times NFT space, you know, I think there's, let's call it a million users on OpenSea. Think about how many hundreds of millions of people are in just the U.S. alone, not to mention internationally. Um, so we're trying to make sure that NFT space has more exposure to the real world. As, as Seek One mentioned, um, you know, we're going to probably be featured at five star hotels. You know, we we can't release the name of it, but, you know, you're going to see Seek One's art along with the NFT there. Um, it's going to be an art gallery. So you're going to see on the screen our NFT and fine art galleries that sell paintings for five to 20,000 or more um, all over the world. Because, again, Seek One is an internationally renowned artist with his art hanging up in galleries in Dubai and Tel Aviv wow. in Europe. Art Basel in Miami, Hamptons, you name it. So we want to make sure that the NFT space is represented well in the in the greater art community as well as just the world in general, because it is the next step. Again, it's like Bitcoin in 2020, uh, 2012. That's what NFTs are now, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, definitely like the utility aspect of it is it's what people always want. And it seems like that's the one that that lacks behind a little more. But like you said, it's you're spending money on something, and at the end of the day, you don't just want like a, a little picture that mm -hmm. you can like show mm -hmm. in your pocket. Um, yeah. If you like, I am right now like I'm less likely to ever sell this NFT because I printed it out and I'm hanging it on my wall. Um, yeah. If you just get that from when you immediately purchased the NFT, or you get like a six pack of beer with it, you have that extra connection, kind of like what you're saying, the the going off of vibes and community aspect of it, which is really cool to see. And like, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot from just talking to you guys for the past 40 minutes on it. And um, like you said, it's something that I'm not really seeing a lot of projects do where they're trying to it's a digital world. It's international. NFTs are international, but not a lot of these projects seem to be expanding their reach as much and focused on that. So it's cool to see. Yeah. And I mean, like at the end of the day, like uh, I'm never going to stop painting. And this is, this NFT is just one thing that I'm working on now. So it's not like, you know, a lot of these projects, you know, 80% of them are going to fail. They're going to pull the rug. They're going to do sketchy stuff on the internet. That will never happen with our project because it's my brand. It, you know, my, my tangible paintings are my life. And this NFT is going to be wrapped into that at the end of the day. So, you know, all the collectors, like this is something that's it's just the beginning of, which is really exciting for all of us. Cool. Yeah. And, and, and being a docs team, Lou, as you know, kind of lowers that percentage chance significantly. Because at the end of the day, this is a, this is a people business where you got to trust the development team, you got to trust the artists that they're not going to pull the rug on you. So if you have your face and your name tied to it, that's less likely to happen. So, you know, we always want to support, as I mentioned earlier, real artists um, as you know, that's the alpha that we're going to provide as well as our holders will get whitelist spots for other artists on the same uh, level of seek one. And so, you know, this is just the beginning for, for the chosen ones, the chosen fam and all of our holders, you know, we're so excited for mint next week. You know, it's, again, it's all coming to fruition. Yeah. And, uh, Neil's asking in chat, he says after beer and Rose, any other products in the mix when weed other collabs on the roadmap? So <laughs> it's actually funny. You mentioned that. So one of our team members, um, that's helped us along the way. He's a part of one of the top uh, cannabis dispensaries in the nation. We might do something with them. Uh, we might not, but there's always, you know, room to play. I mean, we're working again with, with anything from alcohol brands to hotels, to restaurants and clubs, to 
you know, clothing, you know, yeah. so who knows, maybe Ronnie Fig sees this, uh, this podcast here and wants to collab with us, you know, so, you know, that's the thing about us is, you know, this NFT project, while it is an NFT, is a business, which I feel like a lot of NFT projects lack is they don't have people that know how to run a business in a way where they see the bigger picture. Yeah, they have these cute roadmaps that sound great, but can they execute on it? And that's what we've proved so far is that we can execute on something before we mint a single NFT. Um, so, you know, that's something that we're so proud about and we're ready to take to the next level. Yeah, definitely. If we had um, Tom Bilyeu on from Impact Theory uh, a couple months ago, and he basically said the same thing. He's like, a lot of these NFT projects, they come out, you know, they sell, in some cases, you know, millions of dollars mm -hmm. worth of NFTs, and then all of a sudden, they're a business, and they actually have to have sort of a staff that is working on customer service or delivering product to people answering those questions. And um, a lot of projects are lacking that. And, you yeah. know, when I'm investing personally, I like to find these that do treat it more like a business and the long-term vision behind it, which obviously sounds like what you guys have been working on. Yeah, exactly. we've, been, we've been anticipating this, you know, to be a business from day one. And like, we also want to step, we we're so confident in this model that we want to step this out and actually help other people, artists who are trying to, you know, accomplish the same goal as me, um, you know, with, with their projects. And, you know, it's uh, it, artists work so hard to kind of get to a certain point and for them to get in the NFT space and really struggle and fail is something that we don't want to see. And, you know, having the right help can really make all the difference. And, you know, a lot of people don't have the business acumen that, you know, I have or fam has or, you know, anyone else on our team. So, you know, that's something that we really strive to uh, emphasize. Yeah, I know um, the people in the chat seem very excited. There's, you know, fire emojis in chat everywhere. Bengals yeah. not, let's go, bro. Let's go. Yeah, it, it's cool that every time I bring up one of these messages too, you uh, recognize the person uh, as well. I mean, I know a Bengals not is the biggest Joe Burrow fan in the world. Oh. Um, you know, Bengals not, I told you, bro. I, I was on Bengals plus four and a half. I know we didn't get there, you know, get the ring, but, you know, at least we covered. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that um, the the Super Bowl hat kind of going back to what your point was. I guess the closest thing we've had is Budweiser and Bud Light have gone into NFTs a little bit, so that's yeah, probably the closest that, yeah. we yeah. have to it. Um, do you think these like big brands coming in are good or bad for the space? I think, I think it's, it's great. I think, I think it's great. Like I, I have a I have a close friend who works for uh, one of the top magazines in the country, and. Uh, he mentioned that, you know, one of the largest luxury clothing brands um, in the world is actually working on incorporating NFTs into their products so that you can validate, you know, oh, I purchased this purse and it's actually real because I have something on the blockchain that is, you know, essentially a form of a receipt um, and will validate the product, you know, for its entire life. So I think there's so many different utilities for NFTs, not just what we're doing with art or people doing collectibles, but, you know, you can translate it to brands, to products. Uh, there's, there's so many different things you can do. And, and, and that's why I just, I want to give a special shout out to one of our, our personal friends, as well as people in the chosen fam, uh, NFL kicker, Kai Forbath and, and NFL quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser. They have a business called one of none where they're bridging the gap between physical and digital world, where you can have a piece of seek one art in a vault, and you could buy the NFT, you trade the NFT. But if you decide, hey, I want that piece of art on my wall back there, then I will burn the NFT and get the piece of art. So it's really unique to see all these great businesses in the tech space coming alive. And we're just happy to be in, in partnerships and collaborations with them. So again, it's it's all one one goal, you know, trying to make the world a better place in different ways, shape or form. And that's what we're trying to do with Chosen Ones. Yeah. Fam, we got to get you some art back there, dude. I know. I know. It's, it's the new office. It's the new office. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, it, it's always funny, like the different backgrounds that people have, obviously. But um, yeah, that white background. I mean, you're already connected with an artist as part of the project. We're going to get the yeah, NFT so. frame. I'm going to get the 70 inch NFT After frame launch. from Samsung. Yeah. Have it there with our animated one. I think I know a guy that could create one. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so. <laughs> wow. 
Cool. Well, um, yeah, I guess before we go, like, is there anything else you guys want to plug or just, you know, your socials for people to follow you? Yeah. Follow Sequin Auto on Instagram, Sequin NFT on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Sam, anything else? Yeah. I, I just want to, you know, thank the community that we have. Um, you know, I always say I thrive off the energy that they give. Um, SMW and Diggs, those are our other two team members, the developer and, you know, the lead Discord community manager, uh, as well as the chief marketing officer, SMW. You know, we are trying to build something completely different. I always say built different because we're doing it differently. Again, as a business with people that have the experience um, from these big companies and take it to the NFT space that hasn't been completely professionalized yet. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, it, it could be a great thing. And that's what we're trying to do as we onboard more and more artists to bring alpha to our holders. So, you know, we're excited for the for the mint whitelist presale on, on February 24th, as well as the public sale on February 25th. So excited for the reveal after that. I think everyone's going to be very excited based off the sneak previews that you showed on our website yeah. and within our Discord. So, you know, thanks again, Lou, for hosting us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, um, we really you. enjoyed this experience. And, you know, hopefully we could get back on again post-mid to give you an update on what's going on with the chosen yeah. ones because it's only up from here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd probably be down to do that as well. Um, so, yeah, good luck next week with, with the drop. Um, I'll definitely be watching to see um, – how that goes down because you know there's there's a lot every single day but you know there's there's certain ones that are hyped more than others but um this one you know it, it is different as we've been showing and in the art behind it is really cool and all the real world utility that we've been talking about so yep. excited to see it and you know sort of watch this journey along the way so uh thanks for hopping on and thanks for watching if you're you're sitting there we enjoyed the chat today all the, all the people in the chat seem very excited about this project, which I'm very excited to hear. So uh, thanks for hopping on. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.